Welcome to the Everyday Royalty Podcast, where our guests share how they are learning to live in the world, but not of the world, and how they're finding Christ-centered life balance as daughters of the King. Join us as we seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and learn how all these things are added to us as well. Here's your host, licensed professional clinical counselor and faith and focus coach, Carrie Kitchen. Today's guest, author Melinda Fuller, challenges the cultural drive of the hustle, which she says can often leave us drained and unfulfilled. And instead, in her new book, Obedience Over Hustle, The Surrender of the Striving Heart, she provides a beautifully compelling case for the obedient heart. Melinda also shares her own testimony of radical obedience where she let go of her life she describes as striving and made a life-changing decision to trust and obey God despite uncertainty regarding their family future and finances after leaving her career. I trust that you'll love this episode. Don't forget to subscribe to the podcast and share with someone else who needs to hear this message too. Enjoy. Welcome to the show, Melinda. I'm so glad that you're able to join us today. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. Something that I love having the opportunity to do with this podcast is just to hear all the different testimonies of our guests that come on. And I'll say I've been reading your book, Obedience Over Mm -hmm. Hustle, and I've really been enjoying it. I love your writing style. Oh, thank you. Beyond that, it just has a really powerful message. And I know that your story is definitely a story of learning to let go and trust and have that faith. But I just want to kind of start with letting you, just inviting you to share a bit of your story and just tell me about your upbringing and your understanding of God and faith as you came into your adult years. Oh, that's good. Um, (laughs) Yeah, so I actually grew up in a church home. Um, I'm the oldest of five and I grew up in a small town, um, in Canada where everybody knows everybody. And my parents were both super involved in our local church, local businesses. I went to a Christian school for seven years, um, was just super steeped in church culture. And then, um, during my high school years, um, our church split my parents went through a really ugly divorce after 20 plus years and um that really kind of rocked my faith and um it was a little it was a little rocky for a couple of years and then when i was 18 i had this encounter with the lord with some friends of mine um some youth group friends that i hadn't really stayed in touch with and Um, It was just one of those nights that forever changed me. And um, yeah, so from there, I actually moved to Texas where I met my husband. We were both interns at, he's sitting over here and is listening and he's like, yeah, (laughs) Um, he, um, him, he and I were interns at a ministry in Texas for several years. And um, then after we got married, we moved back to Texas and were staff members at the same organization. And it was, you know, youth um, missions and evangelical based. And so we kind of grew into our marriage and into our adult years, kind of cutting our teeth in um, full-time ministry and from there, it's just been one organization or one church after another. We were student pastors for a while. Um, and even now with our businesses and our careers, what we do is work with local churches. So um, I think our faith has been tied, um, tried and tested over the years and not more so than in the last few years of just saying yes to the Lord. And when he asks us to do something, even if it's terrifying or even if it doesn't make sense, or even if we're not really sure whether it really is the Lord, just taking those obedient steps and the testimony and the fruit on the other side of our yes has been so beautiful. I think that your story is absolutely incredible. Your upbringing at the, that first part of it sounded so familiar because of course I grew up in a clergy home. My dad was a minister and it's like we're there every time the doors are open yep. and that kind of thing. Like, yep. So when you're telling me you're in full-time ministry, I'm thinking that is, that is a test of faith right there because you have a <laughs> lot of things that come up in, in ministry that are just challenging. Yeah, absolutely. But 
I'm hearing you say like the, the beauty that comes out of being able to say yes and, and what happens as a result of that. And I know yeah. that really amazing things can happen when you get to that point, but you don't get there overnight. I have no doubt that going through your parents' divorce, that is a major, major thing, especially oh, yeah. in, in your younger years when you're still right. developing your identity and a lot of things that are that you want stability around you in a time like that. Right. So I know that there are probably different circumstances like that throughout your life that have kind of given you the opportunity to test those faith muscles. Oh, for sure. I was reading in your book and you were talking about how you had a very pivotal moment when you were sitting at a conference. Would you like to share that yeah. with me a little bit? Yeah. So four years ago, this fall, um, I was at a creative conference for like Christian women, influencers of all different types and business owners. And at the time I had just started homeschooling my kids kind of um, reluctantly, I say, because that wasn't really my idea. That was definitely something that I felt like God was asking me to do and I didn't really want to, but I said yes to that anyway. And I was actually in a different career for about 10 years. I was a massage therapist and I worked in a chiropractic office. So kind of in medical settings and, um, so I was working several days a week. My husband was working for a very large church, so full-time ministry hours. Um, and we were not dependent on my salary, but just working in ministry. And we were living in a very expensive part of the country at the time. So my income allowed us to have date nights and just give us some breathing space in the budget. And at this conference, I had asked the Lord to provide you know, like open a door, or help me to connect with somebody who can give me a stay at home job, writing or editing or doing something online that I felt also gifted to do that would allow me to be home with my kids. Cause we were just doing this like two shifts passing in the night thing where I would work during the day and he would be home with the kids and then we'd swap. And I was trying to homeschool in the afternoon with little kids. And it was just I was exhausted on every front and I didn't really feel like I was doing anything well. I was just doing a lot of things and God did not connect me with anybody or open any doors at this conference. Instead, he said, Hey, I actually want to give you all of these things that you're asking for greater influence and more opportunities to write and teach other women, the Bible. And, um, and his response was, well, it kind of seems like you're trying to be your own provider, Melinda. So you can either quit your job and let me be your provider or you can keep doing what you're doing, but I can't give you any more because there's literally no room in your hand. And so I came home and I told my husband, I really feel like God's asking me to take this wild leap of faith and just quit my job. And he's like, okay, let's do it. And that was four years ago. I've never replaced my income. Um, I never got the work at home job, but my husband's side business uh, just kind of materialized out of nowhere overnight, it seemed. And without us spending any money marketing him or promoting him every single month, his side income had replaced and then surpassed what I had been making to the tune of, um, you know, at the time of this recording, it's at the end of 2019. And, um, a year ago, so 2018, he decided to step out in faith for himself and start his own company because his side business had grown into enough where we're like, okay, let's just do this. And um, it was like three years to the week of when I quit my job. So it's been this beautiful full circle story of just what happens when we trust God? Like when we actually trust God at his word, it's really easy to say, yes, Lord, I trust that you are my provider. But literally when you are waiting for the job to materialize or for the check to show up in the mail or to put food on your table, um, like that's a whole new level of faith. And we've been walking that for a year now and it's, it's beautiful. Scary at times, but beautiful. <laughs> beautiful is a very good description for that because it's just incredible when you see God working, but we have to let go first. Yes. And that is, that is such a key pivotal part. But 
that's something that you don't come to overnight is like all the little trials that you went through leading up to this point. We often talk on, like on the podcast and in my ministry group, we often talk about building our faith muscles Oh yeah, and how those little trials and trusting God with a little thing, then a little bit more mm-hmm. and seeing that he will always be faithful and Absolutely. seeing that every time we trust him with it, every time we give it to him and let go of it, not just like here, God, as I'm holding on to it, <laughs> it's like, right, exactly. there's, there's such a big difference in that. There was something that really stood out to me when you were talking about that experience at the conference, how you had described it. You it said your response to God when, when he asked if, if he was your provider was, of course, God, you're my provider. And you said that was kind of a habitual response because it was like, oh, yeah, of course, you're my, my provider. Because right. in theory, we can know things, right? but until we actually have to do it, it's a whole different story. Right. And just, just being able to realize that is such a powerful thing. Because it becomes, it's, it's like it becomes practice instead of just right. being a theory. Right. When, when you're actually faced with a situation where you have to let go and you have right. to say, okay, this is the time. This is what he's been training me for. This is what he's been building my faith muscles for. Yep. Because now is the time I have to actually act and apply all this information because it, it's like a whole different world when you realize that all of the lessons you learned growing up in church and right. all of the things that, that you've read in scripture it actually applies. It's like, it's practical information. And when yeah. you start living it as practice and not just in theory, it's like, there, there's often such a divide there because yeah. we, we can know things. We can grow up knowing yes. things. Like for, for example, I talked about how I grew up hearing about our spiritual armor and understanding that, but not really understanding that. I mm-hmm. understood it to the point that I was capable Mm -hmm. But it took going through those steps and going through the trials and going through those things before we actually get it, before we actually start applying it. And it sounds like that's what you were doing with your faith because you got to a point where you had to actually act on it. It wasn't just a theory anymore. So I love how you described that experience for you and what a powerful thing that was. So a lot of things changed for you when you did that. So what is your current situation now? <laughs> um, yeah, so at the end of the summer of 2019, we sold our home in Northern California and we, and pretty much like almost everything we own as well, like all of our furniture and things, all of our stuff. And then we bought a truck and a fifth wheel trailer, a 42 foot fifth wheel trailer. I like to give people the dimensions so they don't think we're living in like a little pop-up trailer, Mm -hmm. but we are living nomadically, our family. So my husband and I, and we have two kids that are about eight and 10 and we are homeschooling. My husband works remote and I'm writing still. And so we're traveling and working and traveling the country. Yeah. So different location, you know, every two weeks ish and, um, seeing lots of cool things and connecting with a lot of really amazing people. Uh, and it's definitely a fun adventure, not without a sharp learning curve, but, um, but we're having fun. So, yeah, I'm sure there would have to be a sharp learning curve with that. (laughs) At the same time, I think that it's such, such an illustration of, how it's a process because I'm sure if someone had asked you a few years ago if you'd be doing that (laughs) no no way (laughs) no if somebody had told me um you know a couple years ago we moved from southern California to northern California and if they'd said hey in three years you're going to uh purchase a home renovate it top to bottom sell it start a company um, write and publish a book and then move into a trailer and live nomadically, I would have laughed in their face. But that's exactly what we did. And um, I think most people who know us well, they don't, they're not really surprised when we tell them new adventures or new things that we're projects or things that we're embarking on. Because it's just part of our DNA. We tend to um, dive deep into crazy adventures all the time and our kids are up for it which is great but it still has required um like ever increasing amounts of faith for sure I love that it's because it is one step at a time God's not going to give you the whole picture all at once because we would be so totally overwhelmed we would just crash (laughs) there's no way but yeah it's amazing to watch it unfold when we trust so I love that 
Yeah. So part of this too, and just, just to kind of shift gears a little bit, you've had to say no to a lot of things. You've had to, like, like your book says, obedience over hustle. And I want to get into the hustle part just a little bit mm-hmm. because you've, you've had to change a lot of ways of thinking and a lot of habits. Can you yeah. tell me about when, when you started learning how to say no, when you started learning to set those boundaries and not just do everything that everybody else thought you should be doing? Because this is clearly not something that everybody would expect. Yeah. Yeah. And there's definitely, um, it's not a popular, definitely not a popular idea, you know, especially in the publishing world. It's, well, if you want to sell a lot of books, then you're going to have to hustle really hard and, you know, exhaust yourself in order to do so. But um, I think the thing that I keep coming back to is, you know, if you know the Lord's voice, and you're confident in that, then it doesn't really matter what other people say. Um, for me, it in writing, writing the book was always about writing the words that the Lord was giving me. And then ultimately it was up to him to make it happen. Like there's only so much that I could do. And, um, you know, one of the things that I was told was you're going to need to take more time to grow your platform. You know, this word that's like a nemesis to so many people um, you're going to need to grow your platform. And, and I just sat with that one day and I was talking to a friend and I said, you know, the Lord hasn't asked me to grow a platform. Like he isn't telling me to go and find a million followers on social media. He isn't telling me to be on my phone for eight hours a day. Like he's giving me words to write. I feel like I'm supposed to write them, whether or not they ever get published or how they get published or who reads them. Like that's not up to me. It's like the idea that like a fruit tree grows fruit because that's what it's created and designed and purpose to do. Like the Lord has given the apple tree, the purpose of bearing fruit. The apple tree doesn't care that, you know, come fall, not all of its apples are going to be used and some of them are going to fall to the ground and they're going to be turned into fertilizer for a new batch of apples the next year or that, you know, some will go to, this orchard and they're going to pick them and turn them into cider or whatever. Like the tree isn't really concerned with the results as much as what it is that it is supposed to be doing. And, um, yeah, for me, it's just, I know what my yeses are. I know what it is that the Lord's asked me to do. And I think so many of our modern day choices are made out of obligations. They're made out of guilt. They're made out of people pleasing, they're made based on insecurity or fear instead of actually asking the Lord, like, is this something that you want me to do? And then just because he says yes, like, okay, so then the next question is right now, like, is this what you want me to do right now? So like one of my goals in life is to, you know, finally finish my college degree in seminary and get all of that finished so I can hang the diploma on my wall. But I know that right now is not my season to do that. I know that right now, what he's asked me to do is really focus on my family. I'm working on a different writing project right now. My husband just launched a business this last year. So we're, you know, pouring all of our energy into that. Um, And it's like, it's a partnership. So I'm helping him with tons of different marketing and creative ideas. And, um, And so it's really easy to say no to other things. And I, I feel, I tell people all the time, like saying no gets easier the more you practice doing it. Like we were really good at doing it when we were toddlers and somewhere along the way, we forgot how to say no, because at the end of the day, our yes to Jesus is the most important thing. Amen. It doesn't matter what my mom or my best friend or my social media followers think like at the end of my life, I'm the one who has to account for what it is that I did with my resources, my time, my relationships, my energy, the gifts that God's given me. And it's, it's nobody else's responsibility, just mine. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So the more we say no, the easier I think it gets. I completely agree with that. <laughs> like you said, it is hard when other people expect you to do certain things and yeah. they think you should do this. And I think that speaks so much about how we are all supposed to work on our own salvation with fear and trembling and work out. I do. We have our own stories. Yeah. We have our own things to do. It's not dependent on yeah. what everybody else is doing. Our story is not going to look like theirs and that's not Absolutely. supposed to. 
it's also the host too. So one quote from your book that I wanted to highlight, I had several written down here, but one of them specifically was, I knew that saying no meant I might not be asked to join anything else for a while. And I was comfortable with that. Saying no to this opportunity could make me look unspiritual, could offend the person who asked, could isolate me. But I was confident in my understanding of what God is calling me to do right now, regardless of how it may appear to others. I am done having to qualify my yeses and nos. I'm secure, knowing my worth isn't dictated by how others perceive me or what they want me to be. I've given up the hustle for approval or recognition. Yeah. I love that. And just, wow. just recognizing that? That's- you wrote that. Wow. Yes. <laughs> but I, I love that. And it is about that confidence and knowing who and whose you are and who your leader is. Yeah. And knowing that it, you're not having to follow everybody around you. You're not having to follow the, the social media trends or whatever else may be out there. Just knowing that you are a child of the king. Mm-hmm. And when you're confident in your identity and you're confident in your calling, that is huge because it takes off so much pressure because we do get so pressured by the hustle and bustle and by what the world expects and, and by what the publishers expect or whatever it may be. Yeah. But it's just such a powerful message. And I really appreciate that you're sharing this message. We could talk for so long, I know, because there are so many, there are so many good points that you're making. But I think that the big point that I'm hearing you say is just learning to let go and trust and just being able to know that your story doesn't have to look like anybody else's. And it's okay that you're not doing things the same method as others. And it's okay that you've got your own path to take because as long as we are listening to that voice of God and something else you said earlier really stood out to me about how, when you know God's voice Mm -hmm. and that takes listening, yeah, that takes time in communion with him. That takes time at meditating on his word and, and reading scripture so you know what his words are so you can recognize them when you hear them when when he speaks to you through the written word or through something that happens he, I feel like he speaks to me through my kids a lot <laughs> just, oh, yeah. just being able to see like I'll catch myself saying something to them that I'll feel that nudge inside saying that's what I'm trying to tell you too yes yeah it's so beautiful the way he talks to us but we do have to learn to recognize his voice when we know his character and we know yes. who he is and who we are in him what right. a powerful, powerful thing that is. And it does take off so much pressure because you don't have to keep up with the Jones if you're keeping up with your yeah. God. Yeah. And I think too, like one of the things I always try and reiterate is, you know, daily obedience to the Lord is going to look different for every person, for every season that they're in. And for me, like, obedience to the Lord was just as much about quitting my job and staying home with my kids and jumping into homeschooling, which I didn't want to do, or writing a book, which I felt super unqualified to write. Um, Those were just as much acts of obedience as it is for me to tithe or to forgive somebody who I do not want to forgive or to parent my children well when I really sometimes just want to check out because that's easy, or keeping my mouth shut when I'm having a um, heated conversation with my husband instead of trying to get in the last words. Like those moments of hearing the Holy Spirit speak and say, No, this is what I want you to do instead. Like put down your phone, go sit on the floor and play Legos with your kids, or call that person who, you know, you feel slighted by, like, you don't know the whole story, you need to go seek to understand, like, those are just as much important acts of obedience. And I think so often, we want people to see our obedience, or we want our, you know, we want to show people like the things that we're doing for the Lord. And I think, so much of our obedience really is about the heart and like what our motives are and the our posture how we are going throughout our day like asking the lord is this where you want me to spend my time or is there something else that you have for me and i think it's really hard to you know um quantify that sometimes because they're not external they're not things that the world is going to see or be able, it doesn't look successful. We can't like put that on a to-do list. Like, okay, listening to the Holy Spirit as I parent my children. Um, Check. <laughs> yeah, but it's just as much about those, you know, those heart conversations that we're having with God 
as it is like the really big things. Like, do you want me to take this job or do you want me to join this ministry at my church? Those are great, but God is just as much involved or wanting to be involved in the conversations about my marriage and my friendships and how I spend my money. And, um, we know how I treat my body or how I talk about my body. Like those are all things that, um, he's going to come asking us about and, Will we choose to obey him in those moments as quickly as we do the, in the big spiritual matters? Amen. I absolutely agree to agree to all of that. It's such an important thing to obey in the little things because, again, that's that's where we build those faith muscles. If right. We're faithful in the little things, he's going to give us more. Absolutely. That's, it's such a beautiful transition into whatever phase he has for us next because yes. he's not going to give us the big picture when we're stuck in, in one of the little things and day to day grind. Right. That's yeah. it's a it's a big transition there. So Melinda, how can our listeners find your book and learn more about you? Yeah. Uh so melindafuller.com or obedienceoverhustle.com is an easy way to find me. I'm on Instagram more than any of the other platforms and that's just Melinda Fuller. Um, And then the book is available at all major retailers, Christian and not. So you can find us um, in your local, local Christian bookstore or Amazon target carries it online. Walmart carries it online. So it's everywhere. Barnes and Noble, wherever you buy books. And it's a wonderful investment to make because you have so many powerful thoughts and so many things that are going to prompt a lot of thinking and spiritual growth. And that's what I want for our listeners. So I'm really glad to have the opportunity to share about your book with them. So one last thing I would like to ask you to pray for our listeners who are Mm -hmm. listening to us right now and thinking, how do I get there? Because I am so not there right now. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. I can do that. Father God, I thank you so much for Um, for every listener who is tuning in, who's hearing our conversation. God, I thank you that you know exactly where each person is at, what their questions and their struggles are, what their circumstances are. And I thank you that each person is uniquely created um, with divine purpose, with um, something that you want them to do. And Um, I pray that this conversation would be one of freedom for each listener, one that would just remind them that God is closer than they realize, that he wants to be involved in their everyday conversations and in the decisions that they make. You aren't a far off God and that you aren't hiding your will from us, that you are very close, as close as we want you to be. And so, um, God, I just ask that every listener would just press into that quiet place where they can hear your voice just a little better than they did yesterday. And I, I pray that they would be able to silence all the other noises and voices and be able to hear yours crystal clear, and that you would answer the questions and the longings in their heart and that you would provide clarity and, um, and that you would also give them courage to step out in obedience in whatever it is that you're asking them to do, whether it's something that seems really scary and gigantic, like quitting a job or staying home with their kids or going back to school or signing up to be a foster parent or whatever that looks like, God, or maybe it's something really simple, like forgiving their spouse or um, or getting their finances in order in 2020 or whatever that is, God, I know that um, you care as much about the big things that are happening in our lives as the tiny little things that we're wrestling with and the questions that we have and the doubts and the fears. So I pray that you'd speak specifically and clearly to every single listener, that you would give them hope for their future and... Um, and that you would just bless them in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. That was absolutely beautiful, and I really appreciate it. You have been a blessing to me, and I want you to know that, and I really enjoyed getting to talk to you. I really appreciate you coming on the show, and just wanted to say thank you. Thank you so much for having me. It was great. 
I trust that you have enjoyed today's episode, and I encourage you to check out Melinda's new book, Obedience Over Hustle. If you are seeking to deepen your faith journey and to grow closer to your Heavenly Father as you seek first His kingdom and His righteousness, I encourage you to join my mailing list. If you go to breakthrough.everydayincredible.net, you can receive a free PDF download on finding spiritual breakthrough through prayer. May your days be blessed, and may you always remember who and whose you are.